Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're in Milwaukee at the World of Wheels. And I met Charlie. Charlie, what's your last name? Johnson. Charlie Johnson. And Charlie has a one-year car only, that body style. So, Charlie, what uh, did you bring today? A 1965 Dodge Cornet 440 two-door hardtop with a 440 stroked out to 496 cubic inches producing a whomp in approximately 75 horsepower per cylinder, of course. <laughs> and it's backed by a factory four speed and a highway gear and on those tight days we'll pop a little uh, Cheater 411 in her. Is that right? Yeah. Come on right alongside me. I will do that. And let's take a look at this one. Now, first of all, the color looks very Dodge correct, if you will, for the time period, except for that brown hood. Tell me about this hood scoop. Okay, that hood scoop is a Hemi hood scoop that I put on it, and I trimmed it out in chestnut, a later model color, but it just fits so good with the copper poly. Yeah, I think that uh, your color combo here really works for this car. I mean, uh, the face on it is just fantastic. Now, you're sharing that the uh, the 440 was a body style, not necessarily an inch in cubic inch number. That is correct. And you can see this piece of chrome. Well, it goes all the way down the length of the car. Now, let's step back just for a moment to take in the side of this car. I want to get in a position where I can show you that right there. That's pretty sweet. You've obviously, uh, we've got the upgraded rims and uh, braking system. Yes, we got disc brakes with Boyd Coddington 17 inch mags. And in the back? Same thing. Boyd Coddington wheels, 17, 17 inches inch also. bags also with disc brakes. So why does it look, it looks a little raked, am I, am I seeing that correct or is it, it, is it just, is the back end a little higher or no? No, it's, yeah, a little bit, but it's an illusion. The body style gives it the illusion that it's got bigger rims on the back than it does on the front, but they're actually the same size. Look at that. And the little baby posts, you know, where the cars, you know, this little portion here in the big back glass. Now, even the... B-body, Chrysler's B-bodies were all like this in the 60s with this beautiful roof line. And you see that little roof line, I'm trying to get the... Maybe there's the light just right. You see how it's going back and forth over that section there. Yep. Let's do the uh, trunk, trunk area first, then we'll go to the interior. Now, you've obviously modify this for uh, a little bit but you've done it so tastefully thank you Charlie I want to just share I mean you know it, it's so well done that clearly it's you know a resto mod for all intents and purposes but it really still keeps the character of the 65 car now is there any reason why that's uh, looks almost gold plated versus the chrome there well you caught me that is gold plated and actually that is a Dodge emblem off of a finisher panel of a 65 Dodge Cornet 500 ah. that is the original badge for a 440 the four the 500s had a different badge there is that right yes sir Go ahead, show me the, uh, you can see the exhaust here. It's going to be Just delightful. popped them on there. Did you? I just got those. They look great. So, we've trimmed out the trunk. Usually they would look nowhere near this good. And that really looks polished. You must be pleased with that. So tell me what this is. Okay, back in 1989, when I first completed this car after purchasing it in 84, I went to the Dodge City shootout. The editor, the late editor of Chrysler Power Magazine, Roland Osborne, was there, saw this rare 65 Cornette coming in, and he fell in love with it. That day, Roland Osborne titled this car the Great Lakes Mopar. So now we have the return of the Great Lakes Mopar in a total different package. 
how, how long ago, we'll close that, how long ago did you restore this car to what we're seeing today with this color? Was Started it? in 2016, just before the Carcraft Nationals, and finished it last year, and this was the first summer on the, on the road. First summer on the road, nobody's videoed your car before. Correct. The only professional work on this car was done by inside rides for the interior. Let's take a look. But this is the first time this car is being videoed. Yes. Actually, probably a wonderful safety feature. We should have that on cars, where the door just closes itself to let make sure you're in it. It's called a defect. It's called a defective hinge that you can't get another one of. You got to rebuild it. I'm going to tell you some cool items in Please. here if you want. We got a flame and river tilt wheel. Okay. Column. We have a um, forever sharp mahogany steering wheel. Let's. See. We have an original Hurst Competition Plus four-speed shifter. And the neat thing is right here is where the clock was. That has been converted into the shift light. And it will light up the inside of the car. Really? And the big tack is down below, so with the shift light you don't need to, to look down at the tack. The stereo is an upgrade stereo um, from Retro Sound. It's one of those stereos that comes in all the different pieces and you put it in uh, with plugs and kind of neat stuff like that. I like your shift knob too, that looks great with the Hurst as well. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, engine compartment, shall we? You know, when I first saw your car, I want to tell you, just the color and the body style and how well you've done it, that's one of the fun things that come in the world of wheels is, you know you're going to see some resto mods and some customs, but it's really just, this one I thought was just really done well. Well, I thank you for that. And the reason it is a resto mod and not a restored car is when I purchased this in 84, yeah. it did not have anything original in it. The engine wasn't original back then. So I really couldn't make it an original numbers matching car again. So one thing led to the next and this is what we came up with. You did the best you could with what you had. I see the big hole there in the hood scoop. I like now, the so, fact that you still kept the uh, headers uh, in the right direction where they come up like that, making it look very 65 correct. Well, I'm so, gl glad you mentioned that. These inner fender wells yeah. were rotted away yeah. from Wisconsin, and I cut these out and replaced these. I got them from, uh, they're very hard to find. I got them, where did I get them from? I forgot. But I'm having just, a mental block. That's okay. You can see you got them. Yes, <laughs> I got them. And Let's, now the engine... Yeah. It's got some rare stuff on it. Tell me. It's got, I found an NOS Offenhauser six pack manifold. We have three late model big Stromberg 97S carburetors and uh, they produce very nicely. You can drive this car on the highway on that center carburetor and get about 12 miles to the gallon. Let's fire it up. Step it up and there she goes. Wonderful.
That work for you? Yeah, that worked. worked. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, hop on out. Yeah, that definitely worked for me. Charlie, what a fun car. Thank what you. A treat. That sound when you got on it was just glorious. Awesome. Thanks for being on my car store. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And until next time, mo pa to ya. <laughs>